In Fallout 4, you emerge from Vault 111 and make your way down to Sanctuary. From there, you learn that your son is not in Sanctuary and it has been over 200 years. Codsworth informs you of survivors in Concord that you then travel to, only to see that they are being harassed by a group of raiders. After dispelling the raiders, you can then talk to the man who seems to be in charge. This man's name is Preston Gardy. He introduces himself as a member of the Commonwealth Minutemen, a group dating back to the origins of the United States back in the 18th century. Protect the people of Massachusetts in a minute's notice, is the idea. He seems to be a stern believer in this creed, despite him being the last member of the Minutemen, after the disaster at Quincy, where Minutemen brothers betrayed each other. After all this, you can choose to help him, and even meet him back at Sanctuary, where he plans to establish a settlement. If you choose to go this far, he will inform you of his plans to rebuild the Minutemen, and will ask for your help by going to a nearby settlement to help the people with their local raider issue. After doing so, they will join the Minutemen. Salvete ab astis, my fellow lore masters, for today we will be talking about my favorite faction in all of Fallout 4, the Minutemen. But why are the Minutemen my favorite? Why not the Institute, or the Railroad, or the Brotherhood of Steel? Well, I'm sure you know the answer to the last one, given my latest video, but I assure you, I will be doing videos on both the Institute and the Railroad, as I'm doing one on the Minutemen as we speak. So, without further ado, let's get into it. From the point at which you first help Preston Garvey, it's only an up upward climb after that. Sure, it can get quite annoying, clearing settlement after settlement, but the Minutemen can be so much more than that. If you choose... If you choose it to be that way, that is. You see, the unique thing about the Minutemen in Fallout 4 is that they actually level with the player. When you start out, they are level 1, just like you. But, as you progress through the, through the game, they slowly become more powerful and eventually you make it to say level 45 which is a high level in the game and the Minutemen are undisputedly uh, one of the most powerful factions if not the most powerful faction in the game. You see the Minutemen are the only faction in Fallout 4 that are fully customizable. You can decorate your settlements, customize guards and settlers, turn settlements into whatever you like, really. You can even rain down hellfire from above on your enemies and own the entire faction. Personally, folks, I don't see many downsides here. Well, except one, I suppose. One oh-so-fatal downside. The main problem with the Minutemen is that they are people, normal, old, regular people, and Bethesda didn't see fit to outfit them with any cool custom gear. It basically gives them raggedy old pipe weapons and laser muskets for the most part. Sure, you might get the one cool guy with the Tommy gun, but, well, <laughs> that's about it. Which is why the use of mods such as we are the Minutemen, or militarized Minutemen, are crucial to, success, to the success of the faction in the game. Personally, I like militarized Minutemen, but when it comes down to mods, it's all down to personal choice. And I don't know about you, but I absolutely love pimping out the castle after I take it, decorating it to the brim with furniture and covering it, uh, covering the front wall with posters and neon signs filling the armory to the brim with weapons. It just makes the castle feel so much more alive. Like there are actual people living here and we do have an actual, we do have actual weapons stockpiled to defend ourselves with. But anyways, now that I've talked about mechanics and what physically makes them great, let's talk about their best aspect, moral superiority. In the good way, of course. 
The Minutemen do not act like it, but they are morally the best faction in Fallout 4 for multiple reasons. First of all, they help people, not out of caps or glory or necessity. They do it because they want to, because they are volunteering to do so. The Minutemen are made up of the people of the Commonwealth, who are willing to put their lives on the line in order to protect their friends and family. The Minutemen also stand for true liberty, true real freedom, which is the freedom to choose. You don't have to be a part of the Minutemen. You don't have to receive their protection if you don't want to. Joining the Minutemen faction for the people of the Commonwealth is entirely optional. But, of course, most people want in, because, well, why wouldn't you want to be protected? And from a Minuteman standpoint, it's great. A united commonwealth dedicated to protecting itself from the threat of danger, which is exactly what the Minutemen do if you choose their ending. You can even take it as far as destroying the Praedwen with Minuteman artillery, solidifying the Minutemen as the big dogs of the commonwealth, protecting its citizens. Now, let's talk about other factions of the Commonwealth. One of which isn't even from the Commonwealth. First off, the Brotherhood of Steel. If you saw my last video, you know my opinion on these guys. They are no better than raiders in power armor, racist frauds dedicated to false code under Elder Maxon's rule of law. They claim to hate synths, which they most certainly do, but Maxon is actually no better than a synth himself. But I won't spend any more time on them. If you want to see my full opinion, go to my channel and watch the video. I hope you'll find it entertaining. Now, next up on the slaughtering line, the Institute. These guys are no better than the Brotherhood, striking fear into the people of the Commonwealth not even caring about those above ground, using them as tools in their experiments, snatching people up in the night to replace them with robots for their experiments and spying on them with synthetic crows. They sound like a dystopian government if you ask me, something you would find in The Hunger Games or The Maze Runner, by far morally inferior to the Minutemen, not technologically of course, but if we know our followed history correctly, the Minutemen were the only ones to nearly put an end to the Institute. How funny. Take that, Institute fans. Last but not least, well, <laughs> maybe least, <laughs> the Railroad. These guys are, well, alright I suppose, but they're too focused on the synths, ignoring the rest of the Commonwealth. On top of that, they operate in secret, which is not what the Commonwealth needs. The people need a beacon of hope to flock to in times of need, not some vigilante doing shady heroics behind the curtain. Sorry, Railroad, but if you want to be better, you might want to focus a little less on liberating vending machines. Yet, despite all of these factions, the Minutemen stand strong maintaining the true colonial American spirit. The Brotherhood may have their laser rifles and power armor, and the Institute may have their technology and teleportation, but that's nothing some artillery smoke grenades and mods can't fix, just to even the playing field a little bit. After all, they have it, so why shouldn't we? But all things aside, the Minutemen are known and loved by the people of the Commonwealth, and if you decide to make it so, they can be the most powerful faction in the game. They are a beacon of hope, willing to put their own lives on the line to protect their friends and family. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why the Minutemen are the best faction in the Commonwealth. Wind guides you.